share the message of good news with you, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The message you can know your eternity will end well for you. We don't want any of you going home tonight laying your head down on a question mark. That you would know that when you take your last breath and you swing out into eternity, that you could stand confident before the God of the, of the universe, before the one who created you, your creator God. That you will be right with God. And we're going to use a text from the Gospel of Mark to, to, to show this, friends, to show our need, the desperation that we need to cry. See, many people don't come to Christ because they're not desperate for Christ. They, they're, they're comfortable in their current lives, and they're just going along to get along, get all you can, can all you get, sit on the can and do your own thing. Many of us are so enamored with the things of this world that we don't want to pay a bit of mind of thought to important things like our eternity. We, we plan to come out here tonight, and many of you have planned where you're going to sit, where you're going to eat, where you're going to stay, who you're going to see. You've made all these plans for this weekend, and that's fine. But how many of you have planned for your eternity? Many of you haven't planned your eternity because you're not desperate, and you're not desperate because you don't understand what's at stake. Understand, friends, that the moment you take your last breath, it's too late. And every breath you take without being under the saving relationship with Jesus Christ, every breath you take, you're sucking in mercy. It's chance after chance after chance to confess Jesus Christ as Lord. And you're not desperate. There's no desperation in your, in your life for salvation. There's no desperation that you can see. But there is desperation. And that desperation, it just manifests itself a little differently. The desperation you have in your life is masked. The desperation that you're looking for is masked by the things of this world. The desperation you have is shown when you turn to the bottle or to the bedroom or to something else. To something else. That's how your desperation is manifested. Your desperation is manifested in that way. In that way, friends. You are desperate and you don't even realize it. But many of you don't have desperation that you need. Life-saving desperation. You are desperate, but you don't realize you're desperate. Your desperation is masked. Your desperation is cloaked. It's masked and cloaked by the things of this world by the things that you that you cling to when what you really need is Christ when all that matters is Christ the gospel of mark chapter 10 we see a story where Jesus heals a blind man and this is the only gospel where his name is actually given his name is Bartimaeus it says this in mark chapter 10 verse 46 and they came to Jericho and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of T Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus came to him and said, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and, he follow and followed him on the way. You see there, friends, in that scripture, there was, a, there was a man, Bartimaeus, who was very desperate. Very desperate. He was a very desperate man. Very desperate. And his desperation led him to crawl out to Christ. Many of you today have a desperation, and it's there eternally, but you don't realize it. Your desperation is masked. It's masked by the distractions of this world. You just look up the street here on South Beach. Look up the avenue on South Beach and see all the Vanity Fair pulling for your affections, the lights and the blinking and the sounds, and it's masking your desperation. You're desperate for something more, and you're filling it with the things of this world. You need to understand, friends, you need to have a holy desperation. You need to have a, a, a desperation with a purpose. A desperation that can bring you to eternal life. 
a desperation that can bring you to eternal joy. That, a, that, a, that, a, that a eternal life that would come through that desperation. Is that you, friend? Is that you? Do you have that desperation, friend? And if you don't have that desperation, it's because you've been blinded. You don't have that desperation. Why? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 describes you. The, the God of this world has blinded your eyes to the light of the gospel. But friends, when you come to see the end of yourself, when you realize what God says is true, what God says is true, that all have sinned, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. All are in need of a Savior. Every one of us out here need a Savior. I don't care what you look like, smell like, act like. I don't care what's in your bank account. You're going to stand before God and you're going to give an account for every thought, word, and deed. You see, that's the equality of the gospel. That's the equality. Because it doesn't matter what color your skin is. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what gender you are. There's only two. All that matters is what did you do with Christ? All of us, friends, have gone astray. All of us equally have broken all of God's laws. All of us need a Savior. And when you come to the end of yourself, and you push your pride aside, and you turn to Christ and you realize you're desperate, then you can come to a point like the blind beggar we just read about, Bartimaeus. You come to that desperation and you cry out to God. You cry out for a spiritual blindness to be lifted off of you. And friends, did you notice something? When blind Bartimaeus, when Christ called, as Christ is calling you right now, as Christ is saying, come to me, you weary. Come to me, you heavy laden. I will give you rest. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. Christ will give you rest from that sin, the burden of sin that's around your neck that is right now dragging you to the depths of hell if you don't turn to repentance and faith. Jesus is calling out to you right now. Oh, friends, would you take the position of blind Bartimaeus? Hear the call of Jesus saying, come to me and turn to Christ and come to Christ. Come to Christ for salvation. You notice Bartimaeus in the text, it says he threw off his cloak. If you understand anything about history, it was a beggar's cloak. A beggar's cloak. Bartimaeus for many, many times trusted in that cloak. That cloak was his security blanket, if you will. And what happened? When he realized his need for Christ, when he realized the opportunity for Christ, he shed that cloak. He shed the trust in his own goodness, the trust in his own sufficiency, and he turned to Christ, and Christ saved him. Is that you tonight, friend? Is that you tonight? Have you come to the end of yourself? Have you realized that there is no good in you? Have you realized that there is nothing you can offer the Creator of the universe to atone for your sins? Understand that God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Understand this is the Creator of the universe, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. God! This is the Creator, capital C, who put the planets in orbit and to this day they obey. This is the Creator God who told the mountains you'll come this high and they come no higher. This is God the Creator who told the ocean you'll come this far and the ocean stops. This is the God the Creator who directs every lightning bolt where it will go, every thunder where it will clap. This is the God of the universe we are talking about. So let's get a right perspective. What do you have to offer that Creator? Friends, the only thing we contribute to our salvation, as one great writer said, is the sin that makes it necessary. The sin that makes it necessary. We're in a dangerous spot because the sin is dull. You know, if you take yourself and you burn yourself and it sears the nerves, when you get burned on your skin and the nerves are seared, you can no longer feel anything where the nerves are sealed. Many of you have turned in rebellion to, against God and have turned to the ways of this world and your conscience is seared. Your conscience is seared. You know that, sir. Amen. Your conscience is seared and you can no longer see the right from wrong. You don't understand. Friends, understand that there's a very profound teaching in the Bible. In the Bible it says, God says, For Jacob, Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. How did God hate Esau? How did God hate Esau? He turned Esau over to himself. 
He turned Esau over to himself, friends. There's not one scripture that shows God disciplining Esau. But he loved Jacob. He loved Jacob. And God beat the, beat the heck out of Jacob. But he loved him. In other words, what I'm getting at, friends, is a good father disciplines his children. And if you are a child of God, like many claim to be, if you're professing Christ as Savior, if you're claiming to be an adopted son and daughter of Christ, does He discipline you? Or can you just go on down the street and do what you want to do, when you want to do it, with who you want to do it, with where you want to do it? Call on Christ. Is that you today? Do you realize that you have nothing in yourself of any worth outside of Jesus Christ? Do you understand that, friends? Are you desperate for that? Friends, all is not well. All is not well with your soul. If you do not have Christ as Savior, if you do not have Christ as Savior, friends, you're playing Russian roulette with a gun with every with a bullet in every chamber. Friends, what will it be? Heaven or hell? That's decided on this side of eternity. And eternity is a long time to be wrong. Friends, what will it be? What will it be, friends? Will you humble yourself and turn to Christ? Will you call on the name above every name? Will you realize that you're nothing but dust and to dust you're going to return? That your soul is going to stand before the infinite. Your soul will stand before God. Understand, friends, that when you, when you walk up to the gates, when you walk up to the gates over at Hard Rock Stadium tomorrow, those of you going to the football game, you're going to have to have a ticket to get into that game. You're going to have to obtain something to get into that game. Much the same can be said about heaven, friends. You need to, I don't want to cheapen the gospel saying you need a ticket to heaven, but in a sense it's the same principle. You need a right passage before those security gates of heaven. You need the right passage into heaven, and right passage is secured and only allowed in if you have the right covering, and that covering is the perfectness, the white, sinless, spotless righteousness and merit of Jesus Christ. See, friends, 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came, the Son of God, fully God and fully man. He was fully man because man sinned against God and he had to be fully God because only God could take the wrath of God and survive. Fully God and fully man, Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago. He lived a perfect life from cradle to grave, a perfect life. Lived a perfect life for about 33 and a half years and then he went to the cross. And on the cross, friends, God answered the question of how he can remain God in his goodness, righteousness, justice, truth, holiness by crushing His Son under the weight of sin, the sin debt that you and I owe God. God demonstrated His love that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. On the cross, God pours out His wrath that you and I deserve on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ took the wrath of God. He settled it. He settled it. He goes to the cross. He says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To be forsaken is to be cut off. Is to be separated, friends that Jesus Christ was separated from God the Father. God pours out His wrath on Christ. Christ drinks your hell. He drinks the cup of wrath. There's the cup over and there's not one cup left for you. Not one drop left for you or I. When Christ settled the debt that you and I owe, when Christ took the wrath of God on the cross and completed that action, He looked up and He says three words. He says, to tell us die, which means it's finished. The sin debt's paid for. Your sin debt is paid for in full for those that would turn in repentance and in faith to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. They take Jesus Christ off the cross. They put Christ in a tomb. And for the first time in history and the first time ever to happen, Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the third day. The author of life died and on the third day He rose from the dead. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, it was a signal to the world that Jesus Christ had defeated sin, Jesus Christ defeated death, and Jesus Christ defeated hell forever. Forever, friends. And that is your inheritance. Understand, friends, that despite what your Sunday school teacher or mommy and daddy have told you, we're not all God's children. Read 1 John chapter 3. There's children of God and children of the devil. To be adopted into the family of God means you come from another family. And when you're adopted into the family of God, adopted into the family of God, you get the inheritance of the King, the inheritance of victory over sin, death, and hell. And that's the good news of the Gospel, friends. None of us deserve it. None of us are worth it. 
God doesn't need us. He's not begging at the door of your heart, tap, tap, tapping, Jesus being all lonely and crying because you won't come to Him. He's perfectly satisfied in Himself. But He desires for you to come. That's why He crushed His Son on the cross, so that you could have the opportunity to turn a life. Did you know?